Hello class, welcome to the next segment in lecture 24. And in this segment, we're going to be introducing, uh, we're going to take a look at how to actually identify the boundary layer uh, based on, say, uh, sounding observation or some sort of sampling of the vertical temperature profile. So let's actually go ahead and take a look at some soundings that sort of illustrate this. So if we take a look at, uh, let's first take a look at what the boundary layer would look like on, say, uh, in the peak of the afternoon where the heating is really strong. And this sounding might actually look familiar. In fact, this was the sounding that I used to sort of illustrate uh, illustrate an environment that's favorable for microbursts. And one of those uh, criteria for identifying microbursts and thereby the potential for strong damaging straight line winds is a well mixed boundary layer. And if you take if you remember back to that, we talked about how to have a well mixed boundary layer, you typically want to look for this inverted V shape. And here we're going to actually talk a little bit more about how that actually comes to uh, comes to form in the uh, in the atmosphere. So you may remember back from uh, our talk on the atmospheric boundary layer in segment one how if you have uh, strong heating occurring then you've got these rising columns of air and as these columns of air rise at some point they hit a they hit a barrier where they can't go up anymore but as they rise they cool dry adiabatically and if you can imagine a lot of these columns of air rising then you've got not only just air that's cooling dry adiabatically as you go upward, but you're also transporting moisture upward. So if you have a, if you have say a mixing ratio in this case uh, of around 14 grams per kilogram at ground level, as those rising columns of air go upward towards the top of the boundary layer, then this mixing ratio is going to be carried up with it. So as these as these rising columns of air go up, then these uh, mixing ratios of 14 kilograms. Uh, grams per kilogram will also go, go up with it. And then at some point, it'll hit the top of the boundary layer where it can't go up any further. And that's usually where the inverted v shape stop. That's where the mixing ratio is no longer 14 grams per kilogram. And then the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the atmosphere is, uh, not quite, is not going to have that same uh, mixing ratio in it. And it also explains why, how you, why you get this uh, really deep layer of dry adiabatic lapse rate. So this red line here follows a dry adiabat. And that's why the uh, that's why the temperature tends to decrease dry adiabatically when you have a really deep bat, uh, boundary layer, and that's because you have all these rising columns of air, which are themselves cooling dry adiabatically. And if you have a lot of them, then that produces an environmental lapse rate that is roughly dry adiabatic. And the exception to this rule is sometimes right at ground level. So again, right at ground level is when you've got the really strongest heating that you can have on a re say really hot summer day, where you've got a really uh, healthy and deep boundary layer. And sometimes this results in a super adiabatic layer as a region of the atmosphere. It's really small, but if you look very carefully, you can see how the temperature decreases very rapidly in, say, the lowest 10 or 20 meters here. And the reason why is because the heating at ground level is so intense that you actually end up producing a super adiabatic layer. That's where the temperature decreases at a rate that's greater than the dry adiabatic lapse rate, which is roughly 9.8 degrees C per kilometer. And the reason why you get that is because you have the really strong heating occurring at ground level, which is warming up that air very intensely. And this is especially common to see on a highly urbanized areas or just landscapes that are really efficient at absorbing heat from the sun. In other landscapes, this doesn't show up as prominently. You can see it on occasion, but it's usually not as pronounced. But if you launch a sounding from a center of a really urbanized area on a hot summer day, seeing the super adi adiabatic layer in the afternoon is something that's actually pretty common to see. And the reason why, again, is because you have such strong heating occurring at ground level and that heat energy is then transferred into the adjacent air, which is usually transferred into the air about 10 meters, give or take a few meters above ground level. And that's why you get the super adiabatic layer here. And then at nighttime, uh, again, the, radi the, uh, the loss of radiation causes cooling at ground level, and this tends to give you a region of relatively cool air near, uh, cool air near the ground, and then a region of rel relatively warm air aloft. So this is sort of just a representation of some of the diagrams that we looked at earlier, just taking a look at what those actually look like on a sounding. So you have cool air of air near ground level, and then above that you have really warm air. So that gives you a really stable atmosphere, which then shuts down those rising thermals that push the boundary layer upward, hence why the boundary layer has a chance to shrink during the nighttime hours because those thermals, those rising columns of air that produce those turbulent motions and also push the boundary layer upward, those thermals have been shut down because now you've got cool air near ground level, which means you've got a stable atmosphere, which in turn uh, eliminates those rising columns of air. 
But that was just a quick look at uh, just qu just a quick look at how you can identify the boundary layer on a sounding. And if I go back to this case, the way you can tell the height of the boundary layer is where this inverted V shape stops. Excuse me. So if you've got so in this case we have dry adiabatic lapse rates going up to around say around two kilometers, and then it's not quite dry adiabatic. And then the constant mixing ratio, the dew point following a constant mixing ratio, kind of stops at the same place. So right at this interface, right at the top of the inverted V, that's usually where we'd say the top of the boundary layer is, which in this case is about, I say around two kilometers above the ground, maybe a little bit higher. But if you uh, if you look carefully, in fact, now would be uh, now would be the season to actually look for this on soundings. If you can get it, say, a sounding in the afternoon, uh, this would be a good practice to try and identify the top of the boundary layer based on how deep the dry adiabatic uh, lapse rate goes, how deep into the atmosphere you have a dry adiabatic lapse rate, and how deep into the atmosphere you have a constant mixing ratio. But that's going to do it for the segment on identifying the boundary layer using sounding data. And in the next segment, this time I promise we will talk about some of the math that we defined in the previous segment. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.